G'day guys, Jeremy from TACMED Australia. Today, I'm gonna to run through an improvised pelvic splint. Now, as we know, when we look at any major trauma, and especially blunt force trauma, we have a high susceptibility to having um, pelvic fractures. And it's a hemorrhage, they're bleeding into their pelvis. We may not be able to see it like we can with external bleeding, but it certainly can be life-threatening bleeding if we don't treat it. So, one of the ways that we can try and minimize that bleeding into the pelvis is by splinting that pelvis together, bringing that, uh, that pelvis back to its natural alignment, especially for those open book pelvic fractures. So we don't spring on the pelvis, but you will notice that it could be loose and their feet will be splayed apart for a big open book fracture. Very common with pedestrians that have been hit by cars and also motorcyclists. So what we need, I mean, obviously we have our commercially available splints like the Sam Pelvic Sling. Um, and these are great, they're very effective, uh, very easy to put on, uh, but we don't always carry them, especially when we look at remote uh, and military medics, they're not always going to be carrying a commercial, um, commercial pelvic binder. So, two of my favourite bits of kit is obviously a tourniquet, in this case I've got the cat tourniquet and a SAM splint. These two items, I don't think I have a first aid kit or a trauma kit that doesn't have these um, two items in them. They are very versatile and uh, especially the cat tourniquet, uh, life saving. So with these two bits of kit and the help of a, uh, of a Leatherman or any other knife, we can uh, improvise a pelvic splint. So I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So we get our SAM splint out and we open it out. For your normal size adult, obviously Rasasian here is quite small, but for a normal size dude, uh, we generally will do some cuts quite close to the edges. I know for Rasasiani she's a bit smaller, so I'm going to make the cuts a bit, uh, a bit shorter. So obviously, being careful you don't cut your patient or yourself, but all we're going to do is just place place a couple of cuts in there. It just needs to be the cuts need to be wide enough so you can fit your cat tourniquet through it. And again on this side. Alright, so I've made two cuts in either end of my, uh, of my SAM splint. I'll then thread it through the small of the, uh, the knees. We'll manoeuvre the, the uh, SAM splint. up into the correct position. And just remember, when putting a pelvic binder or a pelvic splint on, we're not going for the hip bones, okay? We're going over the greater trochanter, which is, a, you'll feel a bit of a gap. So you've got your um, iliac crest, and we'll go down a bit further, and you'll sort of have a gap, and it's where your head of your uh, femur is. And that's where it is. So it almost just goes over where their junk is. We'll then get our tourniquet. Soft tea definitely works for this but I find it a lot easier to thread the Velcro of the cat through the, uh, through the splint. Just start at one end. Place it through to the other side. Once we've got that on, we're simply gonna, uh, we'll take out a bit of the slack we're simply going to windless the tourniquet. And then we're going to lock it off. So it's not like when you're trying to occlude the blood flow in a limb with the tourniquet, we're not doing it super tight. It's just got to be nice and firm to bring that pelvis into natural alignment. And there we have it. That's a very simple, quite quick way to, um, to stabilise the pelvis.